Good morning, everybody. It's really a pleasure to be here with you virtually at GitOpsCon. My name is Michel Severa. I'm leading cloud native 5G DevOps team in Deutsche Telekom. And today I would like to discuss uh, our topic, which is managing legacy to cloud native with GitOps at Deutsche Telekom. I would like to use the context of our 5G uh, journey exactly to describe like what are the benefits of uh, such a transition to cloud native model and of course what are the challenges related with this one as well. In the course of this presentation I would like to get you through three steps. Step number one is answering the question why. Why we need cloud native production model at all. Once we will cover this uh, we will focus on what section and here I would like to mention a little bit uh, desired state concept and the 12 factors. And finally, we will uh, go to a section how and here uh, the focus would be more on challenges and opportunities, but also we will do a deep dive into GitOps based operations, including structures and flows. So first of all, let's try to answer the question why, why we need cloud native production model at all. And a very good background for this question would be Kubernetes documentary movie. Um, in this movie, you will spot an interesting topic, which is a desired state concept. And desired state is very much related with promise theory proposed by Mark Burgess. So understanding resiliency in context of faults, errors and tolerance within systems. And that was actually the very important discovery that you could transfer this sort of desired state by automating the reconciliation process between a desired state and a running state within your cluster. And having this in mind, we can really achieve increased agility, productivity, improved scalability, of course, lowering the cost and finally, completely getting out of the vendor lock. So we can, we call it melting the cheese on a pizza. So basically unifying the approach of management of all the systems independently, uh, which vendor is uh, delivering this, uh, this system. Desired state concept was really a big benefit and big milestone for IT systems. It was absolutely obvious that sooner or later telco segment will take a look on, on this concept as well. Especially that Telco was also under the journey. The journey which started with very much box-based systems like ATCA platforms where you have hardware and software uh, coming from the same vendor. Um, and then later we had this virtualization step that's in the middle of this slide. So network function virtualizations means that each network function is represented by VM, which is still very much silo approach because if you think about the box like MME, or gateway uh, represented by the, um, by the VM, it's very much aggregated. So still it's a silo. You cannot see exactly and you cannot benefit from a microservice-based architecture. Uh, however, it was a very important milestone because uh, the, that was the moment where we've seen decoupling of hardware and software in the telco industry. And it was quite natural that the next big step would be even more decoupling so from assets perspective, hardware and software now is still fully decoupled. But uh, in terms of the software, we have even more and further decomposition of the network functions into small modules. So now if I think about the uh, component like uh, Istio for a service mesh, I can use this very same service mesh component for each network function completely separately. And I don't need to deploy or, or manage it from the application perspective. So I'm very much focusing on my microservices itself and taking benefit of the disaggregation. And this disaggregation can be nicely explained when we compare the architectures. On the left side, you see virtualized silo. On the right side, web scale cloud native. So in virtualized silo, in every network function, things like lifecycle APIs or database, they are integral part of the applications. On the right side, they are completely extracted. So application developer can really focus on the key aspects. If you think about AMF, that will be termination of G-Node B functions, things like service mesh 
or alarming or database management is no longer part of the AMF. That's a very important part. So it basically means we are taking we are talking right now about a solution which is not yet another black box. It's also no longer a single point of responsibility for a vendor. Now you need to consider all the layers for involved parties. However, there is a very important remark which I would like to make here. Running cloud native does not mean just running containers. And that's a typical mistake. In a lot of slides or a lot of presentations in the industry, you will find the claim that things are cloud native just because they're running in containers. You could absolutely run a very much silo application, which is running in containerized uh, uh, framework, but it will be not cloud native. Running cloud, cloud native means that we need to bring entire automation in, in specifically uh, GitOps based uh, application and automation management with CICD pipelines. And that is the prerequisite for uh, being a cloud native, not just running containerized applications. And this is very nicely presented in a cloud native manifesto, an operator view by the NGNMA um, Alliance. You will exactly see uh, um, a list of points which are critical items for being an application to be considered like a cloud native. So in order to understand like what is the biggest difference for cloud native model versus legacy for telco, uh, we need to understand like how the classical management of the legacy network looks like. So if you think about the slide, site, and this site contains a lot of systems, and each system is coming from a different vendor. So you have system 1 to system N. Each of, such a, each of the systems has a very specific vendor configuration management. It also has a completely different concept of desired state desired state which can be uh, achieved by creating a backup. So now imagine that there is a change request, someone wants to introduce new feature. Then this new feature needs to be translated from your head through a protein-based interface through your hands towards the keyboard. And you need to go separately from one system to the other using completely different procedures. And also in case of disaster recovery, if you will lose this site and you want to recreate it, you need to make it completely uh, separately and with different procedure for each vendor. It basically means that there is no way to achieve desired network state uh, in an automated way in such a model. Also time for, let's say, the reconciliation means addressing the desired state into a running state is very long. And that is very much different with cloud native concept, concept which is based on GitOps. So here, everything, including the infrastructure, is considered as a code. It's sitting on the left side. And here we have a single sort of true, which is represented by what we have in Git as a desired network state. On the right side, we have our running state. And we have pipelines in between, CACD pipelines, and in this model, we have automation of transferring desired network state into running network state. And that is the essential difference between the legacy model where there is no possibility to, for such an automation. You have very much uh, imperative way of implementing things uh, towards a declarative way, which is based on GitOps. In our environment, uh, element which is responsible for such a CACD uh, automation for reconciliation is Flux. Flux is exactly providing capability of reconciliation of desired state and running state in our cluster. So whenever we change anything on a repo, let's imagine I'm adding new DNN, it might be just a configuration change, or I will add yet another new slice in my network, so new instance of SMF and UPF, for example, then source controller is detecting it and it's triggering the entire reconciliation process. So that is giving us the chance for fully automated um, reconciliation um, in the network. It is also very important to understand that in order to be declared as a cloud native, we need to avoid vendor specific network element managers. It means that applications should follow so-called 12 factors principles. 
and a 12-factor application is storing every time configuration in environmental variables. So let's imagine, based on this slide, that I want to change parameters in my application. Let's imagine I want to create a new APN. I can go to my cluster repo on the left side, I can change the values, Flux is detecting it, it's triggering reconciliation, but of course it's using only standardized Kubernetes APIs. So as you can see, in this entire process, up to the change of the config maps towards the application, there is no involvement of any northbound interface. By the way, there is no such a northbound interface at all. This is basically not present. A basic principle of this is that each application, independently if this is vendor-specific microservice for AMF, or this is past generic component like Istio, will be managed exactly in the same way. That was this melting the cheese on the pizza concept. And uh, in, if application is really following the 12 up factors principles, we can exactly achieve it. And that's very important for the architecture. In our presentation so far, we covered why and what sections. Now let's just try to focus on how, in essence, how to introduce cloud native new mindset. And there is a nice quote that the most dangerous phrase in languages, we've always done it this way. It was also a very big risk on our side. We knew that if we'll try to port all legacy principles into a new cloud native deployment, it will cause a lot of change, a lot of challenges. So in our case, it was essential to get uh, with new clean design paradigm. In essence, moving away from world of boxes, use of uh, declarative deployments with do not repeat yourself principle, use of canonical sort of true, and following with um, GitLab airbag systems to support telco processes. That was all very essential. It was also absolutely critical to finally get rid of all unnecessary practices. In essence, in legacy network, you will typically have one major software release upgrade uh, per year. And instead of it, in cloud native, you should disaggregate it. So basically de-risk the process of upgrade by making a lot of smaller changes. In our case, we do frequent changes, even a few per week, but on a different uh, levels and on a different components. And that is significantly de-risking the uh, overall operations. It was also very essential to focus on the uh, core competences uh, on the engineer's side. So if you think about the typical network operator, you will have telco experts and you will have cloud experts and they don't speak each other. So typically telco experts know everything about 3GPP protocols. They have an experience with classical telco management, but they have no clue and maybe uh, no experience about new cloud native principles and vice versa. Cloud experts, they have a very solid GitOps framework um, experience also use of declarative deployments and web scale applications, but basically they don't speak telco language. And for us, it was very essential to create a hybrid team, mixing cloud and telco competences together and to trying to figure out the answers for key questions like what we can change on both sides, how we can start with Greenfield, how we can empower the teams to do things on both sides. And also what is very important, how we can also celebrate mistakes. So unfortunately, during the course of the project, we had a lot of cases where network was somehow affected or we had any severe issues in the lab. But each such a learning, uh, each such a discovery was a good opportunity to take an improvement next time and do, with, do it with iterative uh, uh, approach. So we ended up with the system which is taking best of two worlds. On one side, having all the best cloud native principles with CACD pipelines and with flux based reconciliation, which is pretty much presented here on the upper side uh, of this uh, slide. And on the other side, we had also a very classical telco integration points in essence, things like run or spirant for traffic emulation and performance tests. What is also very essential is that the lifecycle management of those systems is, is working independently for all those components. So pretty much you can manage the AMF lifecycle management, SMF lifecycle management, and in the same time, things like past components completely independently. 
It is also very important uh, not to underestimate the complexity. On one side, new cloud native operating model is bringing a lot of opportunities, things like um, de-risking the upgrades by higher frequency. On the other side, we have a lot of challenges which are related with the architecture itself. In essence, things like rolling upgrade and in-software system upgrade, which needs to happen without the impact on the service, they are really creating a lot of problems. And unfortunately, the benchmark towards the legacy system is really very tough. So because legacy systems were developed by years, you will have really uh, very good quality KPIs. Things like, I don't know, one or two minutes of downtime per one year is uh, you know absolutely possible. In cloud native, I'm a little bit joking that a single rolling upgrade can consume those two minutes or three minutes in case that things will go wrong in just one day. And that is definitely the challenge uh, which needs to be resolved in an upcoming months. Also, the things like end-to-end -end troubleshooting or tracing, they need to be redesigned and rethink completely. It, it's definitely very much different from a legacy systems. I would like to also mention so-called butterfly effect in highly distributed systems. So because we have a very high frequency of changes and because we have a very high number of microservices with a lot of dependencies, the challenge is how to assure service quality and reliability towards our customers um, having uh, such an environment. So in legacy systems, the typical approach is that you are testing uh, in the lab and once all the testing is done, smoke and regression test, you are doing an upgrade and that's pretty much it. In cloud native uh, environments with uh, high number of microservices, it is a strong recommendation to use non-stop testing concept. And this non-stop testing concept is assuming that you are running all those tests also once in the production. And basically this can provide a very high, very early warning that certain things are wrong uh, after you are doing the change. So even if this change was totally tested in the lab, you cannot make sure that it will always be without issues in the lab because number of possibilities and number of dependencies are very high. Also, it's super important to mention that root cause automation needs to be done differently with a very high number of microservices and with the complexity which we are talking about um, using a manual approach where you are just delivering pickups and you know human beings will analyze it, it's definitely out of uh, you know uh, scalability. So one of the solutions is, of course, use AI ops. So basically to provide all the logs and uh, all the data points towards one system, one big data lake, and then run uh, additional AI based uh, algorithm on top of it to predict and to support the root cause automation. OK, time for final conclusions. So first of all, running applications in container is definitely not enough to declare such an application as cloud native. We need to consider 12 factors principles. In essence, uh, we need to think about storing all the configurations in environmental variables. So that's point number one. Second is that uh, GitOps as a framework is essential component of the transition towards the telco. And we need to have the ability to convert desired network state towards running network state, not only in a daily operations, but also in case of emergency uh, and backup recovery. The third point, uh, which is also very important, is that we should follow declarative deployments uh, using this desired network state. And uh, we should definitely try to avoid any imperative based of actions. There are still a lot of systems which are considered to be cloud native with a lot of scripting based on imperative, but that is always that will always uh, cause an issues um, in, in essence during a disaster recovery. And last but not least, I was mentioning the so-called butterfly effect, which is very much related with highly distributed systems. So in order to avoid it, there are two recommended approach. First one is we should use proactive service assurance, basically so-called non-stop testing, even in production. So even if we tested the things in the lab, we should consider um, the system to be tested non-stop. 
And second one, we should not rely on the uh, manual process of troubleshooting because the data are overwhelming and the scale is beyond you know, human capacities. Uh, definitely use of uh, AI ops and those kind of solutions is very much recommended. I would like to say a big thank you for your time. In case of any questions, uh, I'm absolutely available. You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, and I hope that you will enjoy the rest of the presentations. Thank you very much.